Hey, what is up guys? It is Arbin Hardware. In today's video, we're gonna build the best gaming PC under $500 you can get in December of 2020. Now, we're gonna go over the whole building process step by step from start to finish. And then we're going to start up the PC and we're going to look at what kind of frame rate you can expect in case you decide to build this PC. Now, if you find anything you like, all items are linked up down below. Now at $412 to be specific you'll be able to run most games at 60fps and 720p and in a lot of games you'll be able to bump resolution to 1080p while still averaging 60fps and these are insane numbers guys knowing that we're only spending $400 for the entire gaming PC build. Anyway inside this PC we have an AMD Ryzen 3 3200G processor and this is a high clocked 4 core APU that is based on AMD Sun Plus and Vega graphics architecture so you get Getting a graphics card plus a CPU that is capable of running most games with respectable frame rate all in one package for $99. For today's build, I make sure that all the PC components mentioned are in stock so that you can order the exact same stuff right now without having to wait weeks or perhaps even months for let's say a graphics card that is impossible to get a hold of. Now to get as much performance out of the APU, we're gonna pair it with 16GB of DDR4 memory sticks from Corsair. And the way that these APUs work, they share video memory with our DDR4 RAM. Uh, system memory and so by opting for faster rams we can get more fps in our favorite game i recommend going for 3200 megahertz rams that's what we are testing out today now just a quick look at valorant running at 1080p low settings we're averaging over 80 fps and if you want to go for that competitive frame rate you can drop the resolution down to 720p and you'll be able to see 130 fps on average and for the rest of our system we find a 500 gigabyte ssd all contained in this awesome salman case which got two side tempo glass panels and four 120 millimeter addressable led ring rgb fans anyway guys timestamps can be found down below now before we get started be sure to drop a comment let me know what you thought about this pc build drop a like if you enjoyed the content make sure to subscribe to never miss an episode so let's start with our motherboard coming in at $63. This is the Gigabyte B450M DS3H, which is a very reliable and powerful B450M motherboard. It comes with everything you'd expect, plus a few extra features that make this board a bit more future proof, like for DIMM slots with dual channel support so that you can add, let's say, another 16 gigabytes of RAM later on if you like. We also find an M.2 slot here, plus an HDMI and a DVI for display output. For our processor, I chose the Ryzen 3 3200G. It has 4 cores and 4 threads, with the base clock at 3.6 and 4 GHz turbo. And this 4 core APU chip offers fantastic gaming performance for its price tag, and it can run many games and upcoming games at 720p. But in many cases, you'll be able to run your favorite game at 1080p with low settings and good frame rate. Now, in case you decide to toss in a graphics card later down the road, here's what kind of frame rate and performance you can expect. I to compare the 3200G against some other popular CPU picks, we see that the 3200G becomes a bottleneck quite fast. However, do keep in mind that this is a dirt cheap 4 core $99 APU. Now, installing the processor is quite simple. You want to locate a golden triangle on the processor, and this triangle lines up with the triangle on our motherboard socket. You simply want to turn the processor so that the triangles match up. You want to open the metal arm, drop the processor into the socket, put the metal arm down and our CPU is installed. Inside our CPU box also comes a heatsink which is good enough for stock settings. But if you do want to try some overclocking, you're gonna need something better. Overclocking your APU is very easy and you can expect to gain between 3 to 8 FPS on average in your favorite game with this gaming PC. In case you want to try some overclocking, I'm also linking up a great budget CPU cooler. But if overclocking isn't your cup of tea, don't stress it, the included stock cooler is more than enough. The cooler installment is pretty simple. As we can see, our motherboard comes with the retention frame pre installed, but since we're using a cooler with springs rather than retention clips, we need to remove the retention frame from the motherboard and we do so by unscrewing the four screws holding it in place. With the retention frame removed, ensure that the backplate remains in position with the holes on the motherboard. 
If this is the first time installing the CPU cooler, you may already have some thermal grease pre-applied. And in that case, you don't need to apply some thermal grease on the CPU lid. Position the CPU cooler so that the four spring screws on the heatsink align with the four uh, screw holes on the back plate. Once aligned, carefully place the heatsink onto the CPU. Using a screwdriver, turn your spring screw half a turn clockwise to ensure the spring screw makes a connection with the back plate. Follow a diagonal pattern across the CPU cooler, further tightening each spring screw with the full turn. And with all the spring screws connected to the back plate, tighten them up until you feel resistance then you want to check the cpu cooler to ensure it, it is properly secured to the motherboard lastly we connect the fan power cable on the cpu cooler to the cpu fan header on the motherboard and now we're almost done the only thing missing is a ram and for today's build i ended up picking these top of the line highly popular 16 gb vengeance lpx ram sticks from corsair now this 3200MHz kit that shows for today's build will give you a bit of a frame rate boost versus using a slow clocked RAM as the way that the 3200G APU work, having faster clock RAM can gain a bit of performance in your favorite game. So simply pull back the clips for the second and the fourth dim slot and simply plug them in just like so. Now it's finally time to install our motherboard into our chassis and for today's build guys we're gonna go with the Salman Z7 Neo coming in at $83. Now this is a mid tower case that comes with a total of 4 120mm addressable RGB fans which will do a fantastic job cooling our components. In front of the triple 120mm RGB fans we find a thick tempered glass front that sucks air through these wide air intakes to prevent the system from overheating. Gotta be honest here, I wasn't 100% sold on the design. I mean, having a tempered glass front looks very nice, right? But from a cooling point of view, it isn't the best idea. Thankfully though, overheating isn't the problem here. And running both Valorant and Apex, I was averaging between 53 to 59 Celsius on our graphics chip running on the stock cooler, which is perfectly fine numbers. And here's what the system sound like in a typical gaming session. Anyway, at the top of the case, we find two USB 2.0 ports and another USB 3. We find a headphone jack, a microphone jack, and a button that controls the LED and RGB. In the top, we also find a large magnet, dust filter, and room for up to a 280 radiator. And overall, I'm very happy with this budget case. So let's install a motherboard and in order to get access to the inside of our chassis we need to untie these four thumb screws holding the temper glass in place. Now with the CPU cooler installed we can just grab onto the CPU fan and slide in the motherboard into place. This can be done either by having the case standing up or having it laying down and I actually prefer having it laying down. Now we're gonna secure this by using the motherboard screws that comes provided from Salman and with the motherboard installed and secured before we install our power supply and storage. Now is a good time to connect the chassis cables that takes care of the front audio and USB as well as the power button. So let's start with the USB 3. This is a wide connector. It's fairly thick and it's impossible to miss. And simply route it through one of the various routing holes and plug it in just like so. And the connector is located down at the bottom of the motherboard. Next up we got front audio. This cable goes to the left side corner. Lastly, before we're done, uh, we got the front panel connectors and you find this on the lower right side. And this can be a bit tricky guys, but yeah, just take your time, don't sweat it. Now for our power supply, I chose the Corsair CV550 watt unit and this is a high quality power supply, it has 80 plus bronze efficiency certification, we find sleeved cables and well price coming in at just $58. Now you want to make sure that you got the fan facing downwards then you gently slide it into place and secure it. Now there's a couple of cables here we're gonna need so first up is the 24 pin power for the motherboard and this one goes to the connector on the mid left side. Next up we got the 8 pin power for our CPU and this one goes all the way up to the top left side corner. Now it is time to install our SSD and for today's build I ended up picking the Kingston A400 with 480GB of storage which may seem a bit low for gaming in 2020 and in 2021 however I still think it's the only option 
at the strict $400 budget. A mechanical spinning hard drive is also an option here, however while this would give you more storage per dollar, your system will feel uh, less snappy and a lot slower versus let's say a flash based solid state drive. Also keep in mind guys you can always add more storage later down the road as the case has plenty of room and you can fit up to 3 mechanical hard drives in the front and another SSD can be installed in the case as well. And on top of that, there is also an option to install an M.2 unit as the motherboard comes with an M.2 slot. Now, In order to install our SSD, we're gonna use uh, one of these two SSD brackets. So we secure the SSD using four screws that comes provided with our Salman case. Once secured, slide the SSD back into place just like so. Plug in the SATA cable that comes provided with our Gigabyte motherboard as well as the SATA power connector coming with our power supply. Same Simply route the SATA cable through one of the various routing holes and plug it into the motherboard. Now we have reached the point where we typically install a graphics card but since our graphics card chip is built into our processor, we actually don't have to worry about that. So the last tiny thing to do is to feed power to the built-in RGB controller and this one requires a single Molex connector so we plug that in and what's left to do now is to flip the case around, whack on the tempered glass side panel and we have now officially completed our $400 gaming PC build and if you did everything right yeah your system should power on so let's fire up some games and find out how it performs Oh, before we do that guys, the first time you boot up your system, you want to double check that our RAM sticks are running in its so-called XMP profile. And to do so, upon startup, you want to mash the delete key while seeing the Gigabyte logo. And that will take us inside the motherboard BIOS. Once inside, under MIT, you want to navigate to Advanced Memory Settings. And then under Extreme Memory Profile, you want to select Profile 1. And that will automatically load the XMP settings for our RAM so that they can run in their advertised speed. Save all the changes and you're good to go. So what we can see when testing the 3200G is that in a lot of games in 1080p you're actually getting respectable frame rates and starting with Valorant at 1080p low settings results in about 80 FPS on average and if you're willing to drop the settings down to 720p you can expect around 130 to 140 FPS. Next up is CSGO and here we're looking at 1080p with competitive settings and this gives us an average of well over 130 FPS. Again, in 1080p, whereas in 720p you're gonna see frame rates well above 200 FPS on average. Far Cry New Dawn however falls a bit behind, this has much to do with the game engine where we know likes a lot of cores and threads and this is where CPUs like the 3200G who only got 4 cores can be a bottleneck to the performance. Division 2 is up next and here we're seeing much healthier numbers, almost 50 FPS in 1080p. Shadow of the Tomb Raider we saw almost 60 FPS in 720p and about 35 FPS in 1080 so almost 50% reduction going from 1080p to 720. So that is a bit of a disappointment for sure. Grand Theft Auto 5 however runs great on the 3200G with over 70 FPS at 1080p and almost 100 FPS in 720p which is great results for this $99 dirt cheap APU. World War Z is yet another game we saw fantastic numbers. Almost 60 FPS and 1080p. Fortnite also did great and I went with a mix between low and competitive settings here so viewing distance is set to far and 3D models is set to 80 or 70%. And this results in about 60 FPS on average in 1080p. However, if you decide to drop the settings to the lowest, you will see numbers close to the magic mark for 1080p and 150 FPS in 720p. Apex also runs great at 720p. 1080p might also be possible if you do some overclocking. And speaking of overclocking, with the beefy CPU cooler and with just a few clicks of a button, I was able to reach over 60 FPS in World War Z and I gained 8 FPS in Division 2, so definitely something worth considering. Again guys, all PC components can be found down below. Now, I am starting up a Discord server guys and it would be fantastic if you guys wanted to join the awesome community and start discussing PC builds and issues and yeah, everything in between. Obviously I'm going to hang out there, I'm gonna answer any questions you guys might have so you definitely wanna join the Discord and you find the link down below. Now watch either of these two videos and I will see you guys in the next video.